All right, guys, today's video is basically soil improvements here is what I'm doing. I wanted to amend this soil before I had set out my latest crop, but uh, that didn't happen. So these doctor visits kind of screwed some things up. I didn't order fertilizers, at least not the type you're thinking of, at least for most people. And I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen with me. And now that I can, you know, things are kind of settling down. My doctor visits are getting fewer and far between now. Um, it's time to do what I wanted to do to start with. Now, my goal all along has been to do nothing but straight organics. Um, that includes microbes, good bacteria. You know, microbes and bacteria, it's two separate categories, guys. And that's important to remember that. And I'll, I can explain that later. Or I may explain it in, a, in my soil test video. So be ready for that. I'm going to do the soil test video first, so I'll explain it in that. But there are two different ways. You can do microbes and you do bacteria. And that those two working in tandem, when you get the right ones together, boost your microbes and fixes the soil up. That's just the basic gist of it. It does more than that, but I'll talk to it in deeper detail. So my goal has been to, you know, uh, uh, let's rewind the clock here a minute. Uh, when I started doing these plots, my budgets were so tight that I had to use what I call the poor man's fertilizer, which is the synthetics. But the cost of them now is getting astronomically ridiculous considering they do more harm than good. And yes, this field has been treated with synthetic fertilizers. This is my hay field, and uh, I told the guy that he does not get to touch the hay unless he puts fertilizer on here. And with him being the old farmer, it was all synthetic, and that's fine. I'll let that go for the field. But eventually, if I want to do more for my deer, that'll have to go away too. But at least in this area, we're not doing that here. So I've, as I've increased my money from work that I'm getting with either promotions or, or extra bonuses that I get, uh, I can now get away from these synthetics, which means my microbes and my bacteria and my worms are gonna be so much happier than what they was before. And I, I, I guarantee you they hate me for doing the tilling part, but I, I don't have much of a choice. I am trying to keep it covered here as much as possible, but you know, it's still gonna have exposed soil no matter what in some cases. So let's talk about uh, sulfur and potassium. That's two items on my soil test that I want to raise. I want my score to be better and get it into the sufficient or optimal categories. I want optimal. I don't want to be barely working or, hey, that's, you know, that's good enough from year to year. I want optimal. Uh, what, some people are a bit nervous here when it comes to sulfur. Uh, yes, sulfur in itself, if you've got a, P, let's say your pH reading is 7.0, which is fan fantastic 6.5 to 7 you know you're living in that perfect neutral balance but if, if it turns out your sulfur's low well if i add that that's going to drop my number yes it, it does itself but there is a way around it without fudging with your ph number this is a strategy that I've been wanting to do for a long time and now I'm implementing it. This is an organic fertilizer, not synthetic, straight organic. The difference here is this word right here. If you understand, if you take straight sulfur and throw it in your soil, that microbes and bacteria they have to break that down into a sulfate in order to use it. They, it. Sulfur itself won't really do much, but they have to convert that in order to use it. And if they're doing it, when they're converting it, that's the acidity factor that can kick in. They're burning that off to make it sulfate, but it's, un, it's releasing acidity in your soil. So when you use sulfate, 
that process where they have to transfer it to sulfate is taken out. Now they can just straight go to town on it and transfer it to the plants and your pH number is not affected. So pH of potash, which is potassium, does not change my acidity number. You've also seen, uh, last year I started using um, manganese sulfate and I'm gonna add more manganese sulfate in here. And this one here is fixing two solutions at once. Sulfur numbers will rise in my soil. I want it to around 40 or 50 parts per million. You can go 60. It's not gonna harm anything, uh, but you can get into sulfur toxicity issues if you start getting way on up the scale. So we, we want to avoid that. So if you have, if your sulfur is already high, do not use this, period. Because that's got 17.5% sulfur in it. Okay, be mindful of that. This all depends on what your soil is and whether this works well for you or not. So if you see me use this and you go out and apply it the same amount that I do, and suddenly your, your ground is literally choking out on something because it's not, something is overdone. You didn't do the soil test to determine that. And just because what my soil has does not mean that's the same problem with your soil. That is one of the biggest things that I would want to drive home on this channel. If your soil does not match mine, then you don't follow the guidelines that I'm using. I'm only showing you this to help you understand there's different ways around uh, with different fertilizers here on how I can benefit this. So this will not kill my microbes. This will not kill worms. This will not kill bacteria. So this is here to help them to get this to the plants. And... I've already been unleashing the first bag. I've already put 50 pounds out in this food plot. My soil test came back with the, the worst area needing 55 pounds. Not, no, I'm not counting the island. I'm talking about out here. The worst area showed 55 pounds per acre. So rate of potassium, okay? I'm putting 75 across the whole plot. That means I'm adding... a more to the soil than what they say is required. I want a surplus in my soil to make sure that the future crops can work. And then as the bacteria and the microbe numbers increase and they start breaking down potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus to unleash it in my soil, I've got those reserves there. And by the time the numbers get up, I should be able to be okay without using any fertilizer. That's the whole goal. So I'm very excited that I am, uh, that I have finally reached this stage. There's another wonderful bonus that my organic matter is very high on section three and is excellent even in section one as far as organic matter numbers. I, for the South, if you have a two and a half percent organic level that is considered the low end but most people in the south are probably going to have that type of number you want it to get it to higher than four now for the system we're running as food plotters you know if you're doing these variety plantings i would rather be in that six to eight percent orga organic matter range the higher you can get that number the more nutrients your soil holds and the more water that soil holds, plus the microbes and the bacteria are going to thank you a lot more. Okay, that's the goal. We, we have got to make sure that our deer can get the best from us possible. So if your organic matter readings like six or 8.6%, fantastic job, man. That's, that's great. I mean, heck, if you wanted to raise it up even higher, you can do that. You can get it to 10. That means you'll hold 10 inches of rain, but that's that's money in the bank for your food plot. So the average here, let's take out this uh, anomaly because this was at 6.5, but everything here and up was better than 4%. This was 4.9, that was 4.8, 
that was 4.1 and I didn't I didn't test the hump here when I drilled the holes up there I stayed away because of that oak tree so those, those numbers probably would have crept down a hair because that soil there is still a little bit light colored but I, I I'm at least averaging nearly five inches of rain that I can hold in this plot down here I can hold six and a half May, actually it's a little higher than one inch of rain i always use the term roughly it could be one and a quarter maybe one and a half at the most extra rain but on let's just say one inch it's easier to do it that way so i'm holding six and a half inches of rain which is why last year when the drought showed up and i had no rain for four weeks it was still growing down here on this end and then as you went up the hill you saw more and more reduction of growth and that is exactly what this organic matter is reading to me so fantastic this is how i'm going to boost my deer take them to the next level and uh, hopefully here when i get this soil where i want it my soil health assessment score is going to be out the roof compared to what you're seeing now and yes if you had seen what i started with please please review the video where I posted my 2018 video footage. This soil was white. That is dead soil. I have revived a bacteria and micro dead soil. You can do that too. If you're patient, willing to uh, do a little more homework and study things, if you're, you know, we all have different levels of knowledge, different levels of uh, experience at this for those of you that are advanced planters you already know about all this organic stuff no big deal that's I'm, I'm happy that people know that but the people that are in the beginning process of this or maybe you're kind of in that middle range but you're still using synthetics you know this is a very valuable video to you I think if you can ditch those synthetics you're going to see a jump in your deer Synthetics will disrupt nature's balance with the microbes, worms, and the bacteria, and thus make your plants dependent upon that synthetic. What happens when the synthetic wears off? The plants go downhill. So if you're doing the non-synthetic or the organic route, you're encouraging bacteria, worms, and microbes to be the, the fuel that lights the fire in your soil. Well, what happens if I dump this in here and my microbes are, let's say they're higher than what I've got now on my test. The bacteria numbers are up. The worm numbers are up. There's not going to be a drop off. The plants will, the system that it, that basically God has created for us is a self-sustaining system. We have come in and fudged it up with synthetics and different ways modern farming tear the ground up it was made perfect the first time now that we're getting back to that type of soil conditioning you're going to find that those plants won't have that drop off like they do with synthetics i'll tell you right now plants are lazy if you use synthetics you think they're going to use the microbes for help absolutely not they're going to ditch the microbes and suck up your synthetics, which means then those plants are not going to produce carbon that those microbes need. Then one of two things is going to happen. Microbes will starve to death and die, or they go dormant. Most of them will probably starve and die. A smaller percentage will go dormant, deep, probably a little deeper in your soil, and uh, they'll just wait till the plants produce carbon again. And that's the process that I am getting away from in the synthetics. So from here on out, with no synthetic in here, I'm going to see these plants maintain a much better pace of growth. They are going to pump out protein at a much more consistent rate. Because if I come in here and find that my potassium is bombing, and I throw synthetic potassium out here, my protein is going to skyrocket because the potassium's coming up. Your plants are gonna green up, growth will look more vigorous, you're gonna be very, you know, really happy, but after six, eight, 10 weeks, 
you're dropping off again and we want this nice steady plane now yes the the goal is to keep it climbing inching up and inching up but there's only a certain extent you can do protein wise for plants but as far as trace minerals you got to maintain these guys and that doesn't mean you constantly fertilize your soil will unlock that slowly but surely with the bacteria not not necessarily the microbes they're good for certain things like nitrogen fixations um you know, maybe some phosphorus and, and potassium. Bacteria, they can do it all. Bacteria can eat rock. Microbes really can't do that. They rely on living plant roots to colonize, grow, and thrive. All right, so I'm going to get off from here and get some of this out of here before the rain hits. I do have rain tomorrow, and by the time I get off from work, it's probably gonna be raining. So I don't wanna miss this opportunity. I've also got another round of copper sulfate, and it's going right out here, guys. Two and a half pounds over the whole plot. So I hope this helps you. I'm definitely getting as deep dives into these videos and as many as it takes. I don't care if I have to do these individually, if we have to do something over magnesium, if we have to do something over cobalt, you know, something. I could do an individual video on each of these if you want me to go that detailed. And to me, I think it's important. So if, put in the comments, if you wanna learn more about these individual trace minerals, maybe where you need them in your soil, what's too high. There's also the canceling out factor of other trace minerals, and we don't wanna get into that. So you don't want your soil kind of devouring each other and canceling some things out. But hang in there, guys. I think this plot's gonna do very well. Uh, germination signs are looking pretty good i did replant this area because like i said my tiller kind of burned me there i went a little too deep and i wasn't used to those bigger teeth so i've adjusted it replanted it and i think we're okay all right guys have a good one hope you get to learn something from these and hit that like and subscribe button